Well, Stuart, Rangers' annual report is out today and it makes reference to reinstalling standards and values at Rangers Football Club. Why is it important for the club to return to this? Essentially, doing the right thing and having the right standards and the right values underpins everything that, that we do at the club, uh, both on the football and the non-football side. It's really about treating people the way you want to be treated yourself, you know, a wee bit of respect and doing things with integrity. And, and I think if we do that, we'll, we'll not go far wrong. You know, you like to think that uh, reinstalling the Rangers way, if you like, you know, is really what we're looking to do. And, and, and that, that is going to under, has to underpin everything that we do going forwards and hopefully will serve as well. What would you say are the key highlights of the report? I, I think the highlights really are, are where, I mean obviously it's a historical document, a largely historical document, but, but one of the things we've tried to highlight are the advancements we've made uh, since the new board came in in March. You know, and, and, and I think that's highlighted in the operational report within the, within the actual you know, the annual report itself. I mean, there's been a lot of progress made uh, in that period, but I think it also highlights the, the turmoil the club was going through. You know, the financial results aren't good. You, you know, and you can see the loss that the club's made there, uh, and there's been a reduction in turnover. And I think that's reflected a lot of the challenges that, that the club had to go through last year, but which hopefully we're you know we're through and and, and we're you know we're, we're we're making a lot of progress in, in terms of redressing that now. Just how important, as you mentioned there, is it to stress that these that this set of results comprises two totally different regimes that have been in charge at the club? It's massive. You, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's black and white, really, in terms of where, where we are. I, you know, the focus has been all about on the football, uh, you, you know, over the, the past uh, five or six months. And that's allowed us to go in quietly in the background and, and, and repair a lot of the, the, you know, the damage that needed repaired a lot of basic things that, that needed to be sorted out but I think when you see next year's accounts you know, hopefully on the financial side you'll see the difference there as well that, you know there should be a significant difference uh, in the figures but it goes beyond the finance it's actually about the, the overall atmosphere at the club I think there's a massive difference you know people are visiting the club now on match days uh, opposing directors guests to the hospitality guests to the blue room who come on a match day fans you talk to outside the ground and they're all saying that you know they can feel the difference which which is great you know and that, that's what we want to continue with. None of the current PLC directors have taken um, any re remuneration for their work with the club will this remain the case going forward? Absolutely yeah I mean it was one of the first things the guys did w when they came in was they signed up to the fact that they're here to do the best for Rangers you, you know it's everything they do is in the interests of Rangers and it's, it's not in their own interest you know, which which maybe wasn't always the case, uh, to, you know, in the recent history of the club. So, so yeah, there will be no change to that, uh, to, you know, going forward. One of the main things to come out of the report was that commercial revenues have decreased significantly. And um, what steps will the club be taking to re-energise that area? Taking a lot of steps already. Uh, the commercial department had had been really decimated in terms of numbers of staff. It'd gone from uh, 21, 22 people to about three, you know, and for a club of Rangers stature and, and, and size, that, that, that's just crazy. So we've, we've appointed a new head of commercial, Scott Steedman, who's settling in well. He's, he's been here a few weeks now. We have uh, recruited some more staff. I think there's another three members of staff have already come on board and we're recruiting for another two. Uh, customer service is key. Uh, you, you know, quite rightly, people were disappointed at the level of customer service they were receiving around about the season ticket renewals and hospitality renewals. So we've addressed that, you know, there's been an IT upgrade, the, the ticket system's just about to go through an upgrade, phone system's about to go through an upgrade, so hopefully people will find it much easier to deal with the club, and all of that should help to generate more revenue. On top of that, with the club being in a better place, I think advertising and sponsorship revenues will hopefully begin to climb. We won't see a massive difference this year, but we're laying a lot of the foundations for next season, and, and we should see a step up next season. On a more positive note, the season ticket sales have seen a really significant increase and looks set to grow further in the run-up to Christmas. Just how crucial has that revenue been? And also, do you believe it's a real show of faith from the supporters in the new board? Yeah, I mean, the, the season ticket numbers are just under 34 and a half just now before the, the Christmas, the, you know, the half-season tickets go, go on sale, uh, which is fantastic. It's up from just over 26 last year. It's back to where it used to be, so hopefully that is a real show of faith from the the supporters, without whom the club means nothing, obviously. So you know, it's great to have the, the, the fans coming back. I don't think it's just a show of faith in the board. I think it's a show of faith in the team and, and the management team and and the, the great job that Mark and, and David have done. And not only getting a great team in the pitch, but in promoting the club and promoting all the good things that are going on at the club at the moment as well. So now you know the supporters are the absolute 
you know, heart of the club and, and, and it's great to see those numbers climbing again. The report discusses re-engaging with the football authorities and the government um, at both local and national level. Are you able to explain a wee bit further you know, why that's important for a club of Rangers stats to do that? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, I mean, the club's been on the outside for too long, you know, probably three, four uh, three, four years, I suppose. Really, it's been in the outside with a lot of the, you know, the travails that it's been suffering from. Uh, a club of Rangers stature should be at the top table. You know, we should be in there. We should have a voice. We should be influencing what's going on in the Scottish game, and and it's it's absolutely key that we do that. You know, we've been having regular meetings. Andrew, uh, myself, Andrew Dixon, and myself, been meeting Stuart Reagan, Neil Doncaster, Ralph Topping. Uh, some of the PLC board members have been meeting these guys regularly as well. It's about building relationships, you know, it, it, it helps that we know them from, from previous uh, days gone past. So it's, that's made it a wee bit easier to do that. And, and they, they have got the confidence now in us that, that you know, the, the board are here and, and the team that is here is, is looking to do the best for Rangers, but also for Scottish football. So it's really important from the football authority side. You know, Andrew's already on a couple of the key committees. The next stage is to go onto the SPFL board and, and you know, maybe in due course, the SFA board. So, so these are these are steps that we definitely want to take. In terms of government, I, I mean, that range, ranges from local council to, to national government. Again, there's been literally no dialogue w with, with these organisations over the last four or five years. And that's just not healthy for, for, a, for a club that's a major employer in the area. You know, that, that we need to be talking to these people. So we have, we've, we've been re-engaging with the senior level of, of Glasgow City Council, Eastern Bartonshire Council, where obviously Auchin Howie is based, and we're starting to make inroads with Scottish Government and, and the sort of key, key people that, that sit on Scottish Government as well. Uh, you know, it's just about building relationships, so if we're ever in a situation where we need to pick up the phone, we can do, and, uh, and we'll get there. You know, it's early days, but we're, but we're looking to develop those relationships a lot, a lot further. Um, investment in Ibrox Stadium and the club's infrastructure has continued at pace. What areas have been addressed already and what areas remain on the club's to-do list going forward? A lot of the areas that have been addressed probably aren't that visible to, to the supporters, you know, which I think is a, it really reflects the neglect that, that, that was you know, in the lack of repair, just basic repairs, basic TLC that, that needed done, you know, basic painting jobs and you know, doors needing fixed windows, it may sound daft, but, but a lot of these things uh, needed sorted. So a lot of that work's been done. Uh, you know, we, we are looking, we need to take a serious look at disabled facilities, or facilities for disabled supporters, sorry. Uh, you know, they need to be improved and the board have given an, an undertaking that that will be done, uh, you know, hopefully by the start of next season. Uh, we actually had a, a meeting with the Disability Stakeholders Group last week and, and discussed the areas that, that we need to improve there. We need to look at the footprint of the stadium. You know, the area surrounding the stadium is, is badly needing a freshen up and, and improved in terms of the access to, to the grounds. Uh, and even just some of the more visual elements, you know, try and make the place look a bit better. In the next week or two, the fans will see, uh, you know, the, the colourful kind of banners going up around the stadium, which hopefully will, will uh, improve the look of the stadium. You know, and I think if you look at the Broomland and Copeland stands, the voids there, you, you, you know, the, 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 there will be banners going into those spaces which will improve the look of the place. Rangers First and the Rangers Supporters Trust have voted in favour of creating a new fans group. Why is this important and just how crucial is enhancing the relationship between the club and its supporters? I think it's absolutely key because if you look at the role Rangers First, Rangers Supporters Trust and all the other Rangers fans groups played as well uh, over the last three or four years, they were critical to getting the change that's now come about and that I think has given us a lot of positivity. You know, there's maybe slightly different views in each of the groups but what, what we're looking to do and what the groups are talking about doing more importantly, they're all sitting around the table, they're looking at how they can harness that positivity and harness that, that, that strength of good feeling towards the club for the club's benefit. I think for as long as we'll be here, you know, those fans groups are going to be key to holding the boards, future boards to account as well, you know, to make sure what happened previously doesn't happen again. But I think if we can harness that, that there's still a desire of the fans groups to buy more shares. You know, there's a desire to, to look at membership schemes. So, you know, both the RST and the Rangers fans, uh, sorry, the Rangers first groups have, have voted uh, overwhelmingly to, to take the initial proposals forward and look at the detail. And, and that's the next stage. In fact, there's a meeting next week to, to look to progress that and, and, and try and get that move forward as quickly as we can. The club uh, continues to be the subject of negative attention in the press. What steps will it be taking to defend itself wherever possible? I, I think one of the key uh, 
uh, one of the, the key tenants that the, that the board were, you know, came in on was, was to stand up for the club. You know, and uh, again over the last three or four years there was no one defending the club's position. Uh, you know, in all sorts of different issues, and it's absolutely fundamental that the club is treated fairly, uh, and the board is going to make sure that it is treated fairly. We're not necessarily looking for preferential treatment, but uh, you know, as long as there's fair reporting and balanced reporting, then I think everyone will be, be happy. You know, we we're, we got to accept it. Occasionally we'll get things wrong and we'll probably get criticised, and that, that's fair enough. You know, but it's, it's when there's there's unfair reporting or unbalanced reporting or biased reporting, then we'll you know absolutely stand up for the club going forward. Does this also extend to online bloggers and their constant and malicious attacks on Rangers? I mean, personally, I I, I would rather not give these guys the airtime or the oxygen. You know, and I. Different people have different views. You know, we need to be careful. I think there because we only have so much time. There's a lot of things we're trying to improve. Personally, I I, I think uh, there's there's these guys say things and you can just disregard it. But I mean, there there may be may come times, and depending on what they actually say, where we do need to actually act. And, and you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. But I think we've got much more important things to do than worry about online bloggers. And on disregarding those things, there's regular noises from these people that the club's on the verge of administration again. Can you categorically rule out that that's absolutely not the case? No, oh, absolutely. You know, the, the, the club put a statement out last week. Uh, Dave King and the Three Bears, you know, said that they're, they're going to continue to fund the club going forwards. Uh, due to the, the various proceedings and court proceedings that are going on just now, the, the listing's not possible at the current time. However, you know, I've met with the guys personally last week. You know, I've spoken to them all. That you know, David and uh, to George's and, and, and Douglas and, and the guys are 100% behind the club and, and I have absolute confidence that you know they're there to fund the club going forward. HMRC this morning um, won the late stage of the big tax case appeal. Mm. There's an absolutely no issue for the club going forward with that, is there? No, no, that, that all relates to OCO uh, and, and really that's an issue for the liquidators of OCO BDO you know, and, and they will have to take a decision as to whether they appeal that decision or, or whether they accept it and, and it has an impact on, on the, you know, the payment that, that all their creditors will get. How important has it been for the board that the overwhelming focus is now on the football side of the club? Oh, it's massive. You know, we're a football club. You know, Beginning and middle and end of what we do is we're a football club. So I, it's great that, that the last few months, you know, up until maybe the last week or two, I've, I've been all about football. I think a lot of that is to do with the approach that Mark and David take to the job, you know, they've been really positive about the way they've, they've approached it. The, the football itself has been terrific, you know, the, the brand of football the guys have been playing, the enthusiasm that's been displayed, the energy the guys are, are showing, I think it's really caught the, uh, you, you know, it's caught the supporters and, and, and the supporters have, have really taken to that and I, we're all about football, you know, there, there's all the other noise that goes on around about the club, but at the end of the day we're a football club and, and that's what we, we should be focusing on. Given the vast array of changes made in the football department over the summer, could the board have envisaged such a terrific start? The, the, the start's been phenomenal. You, you know, it, uh, we bumped in the road last last Sunday, but uh, you know, the, the start has been probably better than anyone would have imagined. You, you know, and uh, not just the results, but the way they've played football, the, the way the new players have settled in, the way the Mark and David have settled in, the, the way the other backroom staff have settled in. The, the, the way the guys are, are tying into the academy, you, you know, the way everybody's integrating there, it, it's, it's been fantastic. So no, that, that's, been a, that's been a real bonus in, in terms of the way things have started this season. So how impressed have you been with the work that Mark Warburton has done so far at the club? I, it's, it's very, very impressed with, with, with what he's done. Mark has, uh, he's very professional, he's very organised, he's very disciplined, he works hard, he's brought the standards and the values back to uh, to, to the football side of the club, he his attention to detail is, is phenomenal. So no, he, he's been a great guy to, to, to work with. We've got a very very strong relationship between Mark and the board. Uh, you know Andrew Dixon and myself and, and, and all the PLC directors. Everybody looks on on great, and it's an open, you know, a really open relationship from that perspective in terms of the communication, the dialogue, and uh, you know, it's a daily dialogue there. So no, Mark Mark's been a fantastic addition to the football club. To what extent do you believe the, the brand of football on offer has contributed to the increase in season ticket sales? I think it's probably had 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 some impact on it, you know, because a lot of the season ticket numbers were up even prior to the, to the first match, so which was great, you know, that, that showed that actually the fans were returning to the club, you know, in the back of what the, the new board and, and the plans in place. However, I think the, the way the team started the season and, and the kind of free flowing attacking, entertaining football that they were playing, 
hopefully that has attracted other people back and they can see that Mark's philosophy is all about attacking football and that's what you want to do, you know, you're, you're, you're paying your hard earned cash to come and be entertained and, and there's no doubt that's Mark's philosophy, it's, you know, the guys will play right till the end of the games as well, so you know, that's been a real, I think that probably has had an impact on that. Mark spoke last week about recruiting potentially new players in the Janu January transfer window, will funds be made available should they wish to do that? Absolutely, yeah, no, that's all been agreed. You know, it, it looks as though we'll probably bring in two to three players in January. Uh, Premiership quality players, you know, with a view to, to settling them in prior to Touchwood, you know, we get up to, to the Premiership next season. So uh, absolutely planning ahead for that. You know, uh, we, we've already had discussions about potential targets, players we'll be looking at, you know, and uh, in fact, there's got a few targets that, that, that have been mentioned already. So no, very optimistic that we'll be looking to bring in two or three in January. The lack of a scouting system has long been a source of ire for the uh, club supporters. To the extent, how important is the acquisition of Frank McParland and how much of a, a coup is it really for the club to attract someone of his incredible calibre? Yeah, it's a key appointment. You know, we, the, the, there was no real, uh, in fact, there was no scouting system, but it, you know, it was, it was, a, it was probably a bit disjointed. So what we've got now is someone who comes with a great reputation, fantastic con contact uh, database, you know, and, and, and well known throughout the game. He's been in the game for many, many years. He knows the market down south particularly very well, uh, but he come, comes, you know, well recommended. And, and I think with Frank, will come then a scouting network beneath Frank, which, which will, will will be very important to making sure the club gets to the next level and stays there. And, and we're we're able to attract the top talent, you know, that, that allows us to, to really you know push on at the top of the Premiership hopefully and, and regularly get into Europe. A number of other class-leading staff have been recruited within the football department. Is that really just a sign of intent of where Rangers want to get back to? Absolutely. Uh, I think Mark's been on the record as saying that you know he wants the best people in, the, in, in, in each position, and uh, that's been a key part of the recruitment process is to make sure you know we've got Neil Michael Hargy, head of analysis, Craig Flanagan, head of performance and preparation, Frank is head of recruitment. All of these positions are key. You know, d again, Mark focuses on the fine margins. You know, and everything these guys can bring to the party should help us get better. Uh, and that's going to be key going forward because the way the market's moving, the transfer market's moving as well, I, I think you know, the value that you create, you know, we have to look at creating value in the players that, that we bring in and then players we develop from the academy as well because the, the market in England is going to move substantially with the, you know, the, the new television deal and that's going to impact wages which will impact transfer fees. So it'll become more difficult for us to recruit from, from uh, down south for example, but it also means that when we do sell players, and we have to accept there will be times when we'll sell players, hopefully we can then benefit from that and that will flow back into the, to fund the future uh, you know, investment in the academy and, and the backroom staff at the football club. You sort of touched on this in a, a previous answer, but when the board are looking ahead and planning for next season, are you perhaps posed with a problem given that you're not quite sure exactly what league you're going to be playing in as yet? No, no, I mean everything has been set up for next year, being in the Premiership, you know, where all the plans at the moment are, are, are aiming to be in the Premiership, the way to go, yeah, obviously before we're there, <laughs> so we're not counting our chickens, but, uh, you know, we have to plan for that, you know, the, the, the business plan is to get into the Premiership, and then from the Premiership, you know, and then we're in there, what do we do when we get in there, well, we want to be competing with Celtic, we want to be competing for Europe, European places, so it's all about that, hence the reason of bringing two or three guys in in January, you know, that, that those guys have to be capable of settling in for next season in the Premiership. The club's academy system under Craig Mulholland is being completely overhauled. Just how important an area will that be going forward? Uh, as I said earlier, I think, I think with the way the market's moving, you know, the academy is becoming. Uh, it, should, it should always be a, a key area of our recruitment because we, you know, the, we spend a lot of time, a lot of resource in, in, in bringing young football players through, and we want to we want to do that properly. You know, Craig Craig has completely overhauled the academy. He's brought in uh, four or five new staff members over the course of the summer, all looking to enhance what, what, what's already there. It's back to standards, values, uh, you know, doing the right thing, being the best you can be, all of these kind of things. And, and, and you know, maybe a wee bit cliche about that, but actually it's all about that. It's all about being positive and giving, giving these guys the, the best chance to, to make it through to the first team, giving them a pathway to the first team. I, I think the way that Craig and Mark have, have hit it off early days has been great as well, because you can see that there is a pathway there. And I'm sure that with Mark's background and, and, and you know, being an academy director, that, that's been helpful there. But no, Craig's doing a terrific job at the academy. And now the club's AGM will be held on November 27th. Just how nice will it be to see a date such as that so important in the year of, of the club return to normality? 
It would be great. I mean, we were chatting the other day, actually, I was chatting to Andrew about that, and he says, oh, it would be nice to go, to go to an AGM where they're talking about the price of the pies and the colour of the socks, you know, so <laughs> actually that would be great, top of the football, you know, and inevitably there'll be some discussion on the other issues. But it's all about making the club normal. That That's what we want to do. We want to have a normal football club where it's all about the football, you know, and we're a football club. I, I, so everything I do, everything Andrew does, everything the board does, is there to support Mark and David and the football team, you know, the first team squad and the academy. It's all about football. And what can the club supporters expect when the 2016 annual report is published? I think they'll see a healthier financial position. I, I, don't think, I know they'll see a healthier financial position. You know, the, the turnover should be increased. The, there may still be a loss, but it should be much smaller than, than we've uh, incurred in, in the past 12 months. They should see a much more settled, the actual report side of the accounts, we're a much more settled football club. Uh, they'll see investment in infrastructure, they'll see investment in people. Uh, as well, you know, I, th I think we've probably recruited in excess of a dozen people since the summer in key roles within commercial, ticket office, uh, facilities. You know, we've, we've brought in our own tradesmen as well to try and improve the, the, the stadium. So all in all, it should be a much more settled picture that they see in, in next year's report.